Alright, so one of my all-time favourite TV shows has to be Dexter, and recently on the channel we looked at the 2009 Dexter video game, appropriately named Dexter the Game. And if you haven't already seen it, I really recommend you go and watch that video first because there will be a lot of references to that game in this video. Anyway, it only seems right that today we look at the sequel, Dexter the Game 2. So Dexter the Game 2 was released way back in 2012, which means it is actually quite difficult to find a copy of it these days. I actually made a TikTok video a while back about just how difficult it is to get this game, so I will let past me explain it to you. You see, unlike the original game which has been backed up and preserved online despite being removed from the App Store years ago, Dexter the Game 2 is almost impossible to play today. The game never got a PC port like its predecessor did, it was only ever available on the iOS and Android App Stores back in 2012. Now the only way to play it is through the Amazon App Store which first of all you can't even get on an iOS device. So I had to get my brother's old Android tablet out and after paying £1.88 for the game, it simply will not open. No matter what I do, the game just crashes on launch. Or at least that's what I thought. I then decided to try and download the game on my old Huawei P9. And to my surprise, and despite all of the warnings that popped up, the game did eventually install. I guess all it needed was an older Android device. And actually, since recording that video, the old phone which I got the game running on has stopped working, so I had to find yet another device to play the game on. But at last, here we are with Dexter the Game 2, and just listen to that opening menu music. I am not going to be doing a full story recap like I did for the first game, because Dexter the Game 2 doesn't really have an overarching story. The first game has the whole Ice Truck Killer saga going on between missions, but this game is very linear. It's just one crime scene after another. Dexter will find some evidence, find someone who matches Harry's code, take them out, and then the cycle begins again. What I am going to focus on instead is everything that is new or has changed since the first game, and there is actually a lot of stuff, and not all of it was for the best. Let's start with the biggest difference, the world itself. Obviously, the game is set in Miami, Florida because, you know, that's where Dexter takes place. But now in Dexter the Game 2, we have a brand new open world Miami which you are free to explore outside of missions. You can get into Dexter's car and drive pretty much anywhere you want around the map. This is completely different from the first game which would just teleport you from one location to another depending on what mission you're doing at the time. The driving is not perfect, however, multiple times I went flying out of nowhere just trying to drive around the map. And because the game now has an open world map, the developers have hidden a bunch of stuff around the game world for players to find. Such as 30 blood spatter patterns on various walls around the map, or my personal favourite which is the different races you can do in Dexter's car. These are simple point to point races where you just need to complete a track in a certain amount of time to win, and each new race that you complete will unlock a brand new type of car for Dexter to drive around in. And you can spawn in one of these new cars at any time through the pause menu, although they will replace your current vehicle so you can't just spawn in loads of cars at once. One thing that will jump out to players right away is the voice acting in this game, or should I say the lack of voice acting. Just like the previous game, Dexter is voiced by the man himself, Michael C. Hall, who is the actor that originally brought Dexter to life on screen. Miami. People come home every day to find their TVs gone, their jewelry and electronics missing, their space violated, their possessions rifled, and their dog pregnant. But every other character in this game is completely silent. Literally anyone you talk to only communicates through on-screen text with no sound. And I made a big point last time about the characters not being voiced by their original actors and instead having someone else voicing the Miami Metro team. But I would gladly take that over this creepy silent game. Okay, okay, you're all here for Dexter, so I think it's time we moved on to the actual crime stuff. Missions in this game are given through a phone call from someone at Miami Metro, usually either Dexter's sister Deborah Morgan or Sergeant Angel Batista. They give you an address of an ongoing crime scene and this will then show up on the little mini-map in the top right hand corner of the screen. Or you can pause your game and look at the full size map in the pause menu. Once you arrive at the scene you need to locate a few items of evidence to take back to the station with you. Collecting the evidence is insanely easy, you just have to press one button and unfortunately that's going to become more and more common as we move forward. So after a quick drive back over to the police station, Dexter runs the evidence you have collected through the computer in his lab. And do you remember all of those really cool mini games you got to play while Dexter was running evidence? Yeah, that's all gone now. You just press analyze and the game does it for you. And that's really disappointing as those mini games are one of my favorite things about the last game. Anyway, the computer will tell you the name of a suspect you need to check out and their location will once again be added to your mini map. And once you arrive at the location, you will find the suspect that you've been looking for. It's pretty hard to miss them as they will have a giant red arrow above their head. And basically all you need to do is follow that person with the arrow until they lead you into some kind of building. 
You just need to make sure that you don't get too close to them or they will spot you and the mission will fail. Once you get inside of whatever building they took you to, you need to once again search for evidence like you did at the crime scene earlier. And you collect that evidence in exactly the same way, by just pressing one button. And once you have collected all of the evidence from this building, you once again head back over to the Miami Metro Police Station and put all of your new evidence through Dexter's computer. The game will then tell you that you have definitely got the right suspect, and if you have, you can go ahead and start setting up the kill. So now you need to drive Dexter's car over to a new location on your minimap, which is where you will find your victim. And there's usually a small stealth mission here where you need to sneak your way through his house and find the person you were looking for. And once you do find the person, there will be a very quick fight which is basically impossible to lose, and you will knock the guy out and then take them back to your kill room. Now the actual kills themselves are probably the most disappointing thing in this game, so let's take a minute to think back to the original Dexter video game, and just how amazing the actual kill section was. First of all, you got to actually set up the kill room yourself. Yes, most of it was done during a cutscene, but you got to fix the plastic to the walls and everything. And then, once you had a victim in there, there was the whole section where you got to talk to them and try and get a confession, before choosing your own weapon and finishing off the victim. And now let's compare that to this game, where first of all, the whole kill room is set up for us, we never get to do any of that ourselves. And there is absolutely no talking to the victim. Again, probably because there are no voice actors in this game apart from Dexter. And the actual kill is over incredibly fast. You do one movement with the knife which is very underwhelming to watch, and that's literally it. Even the cutscene that plays after the kill is just taken straight from the original game. The developers didn't even bother to create a new cutscene. You can tell it's from the original one because it has the old Dexter character model from the last game. And that's pretty much it for this game. Like I said before, there's no overarching story, it's just mission after mission of the same thing, so I won't bore you by going over it again. So yeah, if you want my honest opinion, just play Dex of the Game 1 instead. Yes, you will be losing the open world aspects of this game, which includes the blood spatter patterns and all of the races, but they are probably the only things about this game that's better than the original. And if you are looking for a game where you get to play as Dexter and do the things that Dexter does, then Dex of the Game 2 will definitely not satisfy you. That being said, it is not a terrible game, it is just lacking compared to its predecessor. When I reviewed the first game, a lot of people said that we need a brand new Dexter video game in the style of the Hitman series, and I have to agree, that sounds like an amazing idea. A proper stealth style game where you get to play as Dexter Morgan would be great, and who knows, maybe it will happen. The Dexter TV show has gained a whole new generation of fans since it was added to Netflix, myself included. And with the two new Dexter TV shows coming out over the next year, maybe we will get a brand new video game as well. I don't know, but we can hope. That's not opinion, that's Dexter the game. And Dexter the game is one cold-hearted bitch with a 14-inch strap on. And he's back.